Brando, what's your role? Hey, what's up, man? I'm the broadcast production lead for Flatirons Church. So that just means I'm responsible for making sure that online stream happens every Sunday. A couple months ago, I did a tech tour, and then two weeks later, you guys switch out all your cameras. Classic. We did that on purpose. Explain we did that yourself. just for you. Explain yourself. <laughs> Why did you switch to these cameras, these red Komodos? We had a lot of reasons for switching out to the red Komodos. We were actually looking into a bunch of different cameras for about maybe six months. Uh, C500s, Sony FX9s, looking at a bunch of different brands. But our whole team decided to start chasing after this ARXR Unreal Engine environment using our giant LED walls and making sure they look as good as possible. So when we brought these in for testing on Christmas, they look nice. So now we have 12 red Komodos. Wait a second, what did he say? Our whole team decided to start chasing after this ARXR Unreal Engine environment using our giant LED walls. I asked Brando a simple question, why did they switch to red cameras? And then next thing I know, he's talking about ARXR Unreal Engine. I've never heard of these things before. So let's get a bit more context on the story behind all this from their live video director, Bobby. Just like everyone else, you sit around and you watch television and you're like, oh, how did they do that? Some good examples of live content would be like America's Got Talent, American Idol, just all these big shows. You're like, man, how do they do all this graphical stuff, all this LED content? And then everyone knows it, The Mandalorian came out. And you're like, how in the world are they doing this? Like, it's just amazing. How can a church use this? Uh, here at Flatirons, we're always trying to figure out how can we help lead industry in new areas? And that's something that our lead pastor is always asking. Like, we should be on the forefront of things. How do we do this? And so I just had an idea one day. I was like, you know what? Maybe it's time to try to, you know, let's go for it. And I just did a quick presentation on XR environments. And they were just kind of blown away that this is something that's actually attainable and something that you can do. That quickly turned into bringing in the lead pastor, having another second meeting, which then again quickly was like, hey, how can we get this by, you know, Easter? That would be awesome. It was a very quick turnaround. Brando did an awesome job finding some people to help build this all out. So Bobby just mentioned they found some people to help them out to implement this idea for their Easter worship gathering. Those people are the folks at Events United. They are a full service event production company that uses cutting edge technology to define experiences that go far beyond the conventional. And boy oh boy, they are right about that. Early on, Flatirons wanted to do something special for their Easter service. A lot of people use you know video or photos um, to get across their, their message for the pastor of the day of, but uh, Flatirons Church really wanted to push the envelope on the technology side um, to help aid the story that, uh, that the pastor Jim was trying to get to. Creating these worlds digitally, you, you know, we, we create them in a way that, you know, there's still kind of this randomness like you'd see in nature. So, you know, there is a scene where, you know, thunder and lightning, you know, is happening and it's, it's striking down and, you know, a lot of those points in times that it's random like it's completely randomly generated or procedurally generated so that you know when we're coming back and we're we're re-watching the content it can be different every time it's not like you're just playing back one one video file it's fully immersive so that you know it's the randomization of things allows us to get stuff feeling like it's the real world um, if everything happened on cue it, it it wouldn't happen perfectly and it wouldn't feel natural um, so when we're going back and we are creating these worlds a lot of times people are just taking images that loop over and over again but for us we really wanted to feel like a storyline that started and ended uh, in, in a location we started you know further back in the scene and when you know Jim's talking about Jesus being in the garden it's it's really him and in that um, in that moment you really feel like hey I you know I could see Jesus being here and then as the camera pushes through we start to see that there's there's this storm beginning to kind of generate and, and it's beginning to rain it's beginning to thunder so you know we really wanted to create a moment in time where it felt like we were traveling back in time to witness um, you know what Jesus might have been going through from the beginning of that night until when that actual you know he raises from the dead three days later right from the get-go you know we, we sat down we talked with the pastor and we developed each and every one of these worlds based off of what he wanted and what you know his idea of the story was going to be and it wasn't just like hey let's pick some stock footage and, and throw it up on the wall um, because it looks pretty but we also wanted to aid but not distract you know it's a the 
we want it to be a very slow push into the scene um, to have it be there but not have it be distracting where the viewer is taken out of the actual message. And so for us, that's where you know Disguise and Unreal Engine played a massive role because as we were developing um, these these worlds, we needed a playback engine that could that could handle that. And and that's kind of where we ended up with uh, a mixture of video playback and real-time renders. Those of you who are gamers are already familiar with this. I'm not a gamer, so I Googled it. Unreal Engine is a 3D computer graphics game engine developed by Epic Games. They're the makers of popular video games like Fortnite. So now that you understand the concept of XR in Unreal Engine and what they're trying to accomplish here, we can go back to our original question, why did they switch to the red Komodo? Uh, the primary thing that we always struggled with, with the Vericams, is making sure that the color was unilateral across every single one. The color looks great with each individual camera. Trying to lock it in with all nine was really challenging. So that's the first thing is color is great on the red Komodos. And the second thing is once the Komodos are gen locked and you dip into that global shutter, the LED wall looks amazing. Most cameras have a rolling shutter. So that means that as they're receiving the image, they're receiving it slowly from bottom up. Global shutter, the image is the image that the camera sees every single frame is full. In a worship environment, it actually is pretty cool because there's times where there's flashing lights. It looks like what it looks like in real life. Uh, gen lock is when you lock in your camera so that it matches frame by frame with other cameras. We have a giant LED wall and the LED wall can be gen locked. So it sends out, it, it's basically sending out patterns so that every camera understands, okay, at this point in the timeline, the wall is going to be flashing. And we're, our wall flashes at 59.94 or 60 FPS. And so all the cameras are locked in at that to make sure that there is no flicker on the back wall. So instead of getting the production package, we actually ended up doing something a little bit more for us. So we ended up getting these nice little red USB. This is the way that you're able to get static IP into the camera via ethernet. Cause I believe you can do it through wireless, but we didn't want to mess with that. You have 4,000 people in here. That's gonna be a whole kerfuffle. Uh, we made sure every camera had a production expander module underneath. I don't know if you can see that from there. So this little package allows you to get gen lock into your camera, time code, control, if you're running it like on a Movi or something like that. But we're only using it for gen lock right now. And then we're just running it all through a false gold mount uh, battery package. We're running power out of the false gold, gold mount into the camera and into our Atomus and haven't had any problems. And then every single camera has a little red, uh, red volt battery. Just in case power goes out, the cameras won't die for about 45 minutes. The monitor that we're going with with all of our setups is the Atomus. We use Ninja, Shoguns, and the Sumo over there. Yeah, so one of the things that we're constantly battling with this live space and broadcast is making sure that there's not a lot of lip sync during speaker portions. So what we're doing is getting a signal straight out of the red Komodo into our system, into our switchers. And then we're actually sending out another signal, video signal for the Atomus Shoguns. That way we're not daisy chaining from the Atomus, we're getting the direct feed from the red Komodo. A lot of places might not be able to do that because it requires a lot of different inputs and outputs, but we were, we are lucky enough to be able to do that. The other thing that some of our cameras run is the Tilta Nucleus. Doesn't break the bank for your wireless controller. So this particular setup is too tall for your cam up to reach up there and mess with the lens. So you're able to just do it here with the handheld. You put a magic arm for your monitor and then they're able to slide up and down. And then we're running the Scarhoy tally system for all of our setups, except for the wireless cameras. This is something sick. We found out there's wireless tally. You have to make sure you have enough outputs from your switcher to be able to get them working. But yeah, so Scarhoy is all of our cameras in our house for the tally system. QB is what we use for our wireless system. So the cool thing about this camera is like, we're running, we're running everything off of gold mount so it doesn't stack really high like V-mount batteries. We use the Teradek Ranger wireless system for our two wireless cameras. We ended up just needing these as a solution. There's, again, there's 4,000 people in the auditorium. We needed something that was reliable for our wireless operators. We were struggling with figuring out how to do tally wirelessly, but this has been a great solution. It's just the QB wireless tally systems. They run power direct out of the Komodo. It's just connected directly into the D-tap out of the wooden camera gold mount 
battery system for the red. <laughs> I just realized this is a whole Frankenstein solution. We'll walk us through. <laughs> it's interesting because the red Komodo, what it offers is a tiny package, but you can build it out to be whatever you need it to be. In this particular circumstance, we decided to go with the Tilta body cage. This is a wooden camera, little handle, so it makes it feel a little nicer. Our cam ups usually operate like this. And what happens is to get your camera to do certain stuff, you just have to build it out, but at least you're not holding in an eight pound camera body. You're holding this tiny little camera and then you can add on to it. For this solution, we're using the wooden camera gold mount converter box, and it just plugs in really snug, nicely into the actual camera body. That's it right here. And then we're just detapping directly into the camera. Now the Ranger system is awesome because it goes directly into the back and then you fit your gold mount battery on the back of it. And now your Ranger's ready to go. Last thing is the monitor. Just like any other monitor, needs battery. We run straight off of DTAP and it SDIs into the camera. So these are our only cameras so that we're not receiving a direct feed. The feed is getting sent to the Ranger, the wireless Ranger system, and then we receive the system from the wireless Ranger into our uh, switcher system and it's like barely has any delay it's fast yeah so in november uh matthew carmen from red came out and was showing us a bunch of different cameras he had the raptor he had the komodos and he was just kind of trying to see what we would think so uh me and my <laughs> curiosity was like hey what would it look like to get nine of these in for december so yeah they made it happen for us they gave us a bunch of them uh we had a, a raptor and eight reds i believe uh, red Komodos. And instantly at campuses, we were told that everything just looked so much clearer and the colors were just so much better. Trying to ask people who don't do this for a living, like, can you explain that? They just, they're like, I don't know how to explain it. It just looks better. So whatever you guys are doing, it's amazing. We're like, oh, awesome. So I was, I was always a big Canon fan. And one thing I noticed when we switched from back in the day, I've been here a while. So I was here when we went from Canons to Panasonics and now we're at red. We noticed that the Canons color space would kind of lean more magenta, kind of reddish color. Uh, the very cams I noticed would shift a little bluish color. The reds just seemed like they were very more neutral. They still lean a, maybe a little red for us, but um, they're definitely a lot more neutral. So there's a lot less color balancing that we have to do here, which is pretty awesome. That's one of the things that, that we notice. Uh, the sharpness of the image is another thing that's just incredible how sharp everything just feels. This is a 6K camera. Uh, it's, it, shoots, it shoots great, great footage. The problem is here at Flatirons, we shoot uh, 5994 for the message and 2398 uh, for worship, so 24 and 60. The problem is if you try to do a 6K sensor out, it, out, it actually maxes out the frame rate at 40 FPS, and so it's very jittery. So we actually have to down convert to 4K. We're only using a 4K, I guess, 4K, 16.9. And that way we're able to do the actual 24 to 60 swap. So there's a lot of limitations with the higher quality that you go to. If you're using these for like a creative type thing, that's that you should be totally fine. Um, the lower you go, the more frame rate you get. So you can do some beautiful slow-mo. If you're shooting just in 1080 for a creative, it's, it's, it's beautiful. All right, these are the RCP Pros. Uh, the difference between an RCP and the RCP Pro is it has the blue pill built into uh, the, this, this uh, control panel. Uh, and that blue pill just allows it to talk to the red Komodos. Basically, you can control all the menu settings on these panels. We have one for almost every camera. Uh, we will have one for every camera just to make it easier on our shaders. We basically have it set up right now so that we can quickly shade our ISO, we shoot everything wide open to get the shallowest depth of field possible. And we just have a one, one little knob that we switch back and forth uh, for the ISO. They also have the shutter angle, so if we want uh, to change that for any reason, we can. And we also have a preset for our 2398 and 5994. So as a shader, you're usually back here watching a false color monitor, and they just are able to quickly switch whatever they need to, so the exposure looks looks accurate. So this is the VX4. This is the powerhouse, the backbone for uh, Disguise. Uh, it does all the, the hard drive memory stuff, it holds all the storage. Uh, this up here is the render stream. So this is how you do all of the um, playback uh, that helps carry that bandwidth. And then we also have a, the cheese grater up above to help with our lighting, playback videos as well. Just, just kind of extra in, in addition to all this. 
here in the room having a 4,000 seat auditorium, having everything match with the side screens match what's happening on stage, the back wall matching what you actually see is really important. That's really why we went with the Komodo. And that's how we kind of got started with this uh, XR environment or AR or whatever you want to call it. We're kind of doing a mixed reality thing right now as we start stepping into what does AR look like? How do you do all this, these, uh, this new technology? How do you use it in a live environment? If you're in a studio space, we could do all kinds of crazy fun things. But in a live environment, how can we use this technology to enhance uh, the message that we're trying to send out? A huge thanks to the team at Flatirons Church for their innovation and their willingness to share what they've been up to because I remember when I watched that Easter service on YouTube for the first time, I was blown away by what I was seeing on that LED wall. And turns out there was a whole lot that went into making that happen. So thank you, Brando and Bobby and the whole team at Flatirons Church for just inspiring us all in implementing this new tech in your worship gathering. I also wanna thank Red Digital Cinema for sponsoring this video and Matt, their sales rep for the House of Worship for inviting me to capture what Flatirons has been up to. As you've already heard in this video, Matthew Carmen with Red Cinema is the guy to contact if your church is interested in implementing Red cameras. You can get a hold of Matt easily by clicking the link below this video to contact him and he'll answer any questions you have about this process. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.